Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, 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 hello and welcome back, everyone. Should be saying, uh, yeah, welcome back. I've uh, been off for a week uh, this last week, so um, not really off in terms of doing stuff, just off from being able to put out an episode. Um, reason being, uh, my wife and I were at the uh, Feast of the Fallen celebration up there in Springfield, hosted by Raven Moon Hearth. Had a wonderful time out there. Um, on that Saturday, um, just, uh, you know, m- making friends, meeting, you know, seeing old friends, making new friends, um, learning a lot from each other, sharing in food and fellowship and then a ritual, you know, um, it was a really wholesome experience. And, um, I don't think that I'm the only one who, that, who attended can say that they were, uh, positively impacted by this. So, you know, you guys hear me have uh, been talking on this podcast plenty of times about Raven Moon Hearth and Greg, our, their chieftain, and the other folks, you know, Jared and Michelle and Max and Dawn and Keisha, um, everybody, uh, you know, associated or affiliated um, as part of the hearth, you know, that, that, that heathen kindred are really, really top-notch folks, you know, and, and we're blessed here in, in our area to have a good and wholesome community that you know, not just Norse pagans, but, you know, they, they, they have definite things that are closed off to their hearth, but then they have these public events where anybody and everybody is, you know, welcome to come and, and see what we're all about. We, I mean, he's saying like, you know, the heathen uh, side of, of, of paganism, you know. Um, and then, you know, my tribe, Hilarity Folk, has become very close with them, and so there's this, you know, kind of a... <sighs> A un- not to say a union per se, but uh, like a, like how kingdoms would have allies, you know, back in the olden days, and um, having knowing that you have people who, um, you know, see things, view things close enough in the world to you that you know you you can tie weird and share luck and all this kind of really amazing things that that build, you know, a strong heathen community, which then can foster strong heathen kindreds or tribes so it's a great it's a great opportunity um, here in our area of middle tennessee and i feel very blessed to have that network and and areas of of you know places that we can go to do these types of things so anyway um if you want to uh you know see more you can go on facebook to feast of the fallen there was an event page and i think there should still be you know, information up there about it, but it is a annual thing with Raven Moon Hearth, um, you know, who, who who hosts the event. So definitely check them out if you're in the immediate area or surrounding areas of, of Middle Tennessee. Um, uh, a lot of folks actually come from out of state and, and from a pretty good distance away. I remember meeting one person who came to Shadow Moot, which is another uh, hearth-hosted and public event, and, uh, uh, you know, end of October around winter nights, uh, you know, there were, there was a guy that came down from there or that came up there to that event all the way, like eight hours away, something like that, you know? So, um, they do these things every year and, um, have always put on a really, really good, you know, they, they, they host wonderful events. They look out for people and, and the people that come to these events are on the same on that same, you know, wavelength, whatever. Everybody looks out for one another while we're there. So check them out. Um, but that's why I didn't have a podcast last week is because um, my wife and I were vendors for the event. So there were a lot of crafts and things that she was needing help with and um, making sure that we had all of our stock and inventory that we wanted to take to the event and uh, trying to, you know, realizing that that was coming up and we had to have our time, any spare time that we both had available, sometimes even, you know, 
doing things while doing other things, you know, multitasking. Um, there was just no real time for me to, you know, record an episode and um, have it out. So it's not due to the lack of content that I have to be able to talk about or the, or the topics that we can ramble on about. It just had to do with other obligations that took precedence over. So I appreciate you's understanding. Um, and thank you come again for coming back for all this. So uh, this week is going to be the start of, I think, a, a long running uh, and maybe, you know, the ongoing future of the podcast in a way. Uh, I have so many suggestions. I, I, I did a sort of like a call to action post in uh, on the Mid, Midgard Musings Facebook page, you know, asking people what the, that particular week's topic should be on like the episode topic what should it be you guys you know get some get some engagement get some interaction in the comment section and see what people have to say and you guys pulled through so amazingly you guys suggested so many great things that are going to now help fuel the future of of you know the podcast and in the future episodes at least um so it's really really exciting for me to see that level of interest and in, and in what people you know that don't have a podcast, but that want to have a topic on their mind talked about on this podcast is, is really super cool. And I love the engagement. So thank you all for really showing up and, and, you know, doing the thing. Um, so this, uh, this, this one, you know, reading through all the comments this, this week's episode and, and trying to decide where do we start, you know, do I, you know, do I start at the top or bottom or pick them randomly? And I thought, what better what what better format to to use on a random heathen ramblings podcast than to pick a comment at random you know um and and see how it fits into other things that are maybe going on in you know heathen podcasters or youtubers or or, or whatever to see what's kind of or just what's going on in general in the world right what's going on in our respective worlds you know um how how we're doing what we're doing and and to see if the randomness of sort of letting it letting it go, casting it out there, so to speak, you know, using that methodology, see if it has anything to do with uh, showing just how united things really are and how in things are intertwined and and all that fun stuff. So um, again, if you, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm just really excited to have seen so many comments uh, come in, and um, I'm gonna. I would just really like to to say that I like that idea and, and we'll probably keep up with that so you know be on the lookout for other future social media posts where i say what do you guys think we should be talking about now and, and see what you guys come up with um in addition from that if you are someone that's listening and um, or watching and you don't have those social media platforms and you're just you know wanting to get an idea out to me you can do it two ways one of two ways either you can email the podcast and that's midgard musings tn at gmail.com or you can call uh, the hotline, uh, and it's a 24-hour number, so it doesn't matter where you're listening in the world. Um, it is a U.S.-based number, but it's um, a U.S. Uh, domestic U.S.-based number, so it's 615-619-2000. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I had to think about it for a second. I'm like, what's my own number? But anyways, if you call in there, it'll, you can leave a voicemail of... Uh, what topic you'd like to have on the podcast? You can remain anonymous. You you know don't have to state who you are, but if if you do, and then you know I'll feature you on the on the podcast. We'll we'll listen to your to your call and use that as the episode. And if you're a bit more of uh, you know shy or you don't want your voice out there, you can just send that email uh, to the same same thing. And in that same way, remain anonymous. If you want me to include your name, I'll mention you by name in the in the episode, and if you tell me not to, then I won't. Um, so yeah, multiple ways of, of engaging, you know, doing all these types of things, and so um, let's get into it, man. Um, this, this one is going to be a comment by uh, Russell, Russell Lang, so thank you, Russell. Um, he said, I'm not entirely sure if you've done an episode, but something I've been asked a lot, and I would love to refer someone to an episode 
What does a practicing heathen do? What are some activities you may find a heathen doing during quote-unquote worship? Which also leads to why do heathens not worship the same way bigger religions do? In short, I'd love to be able to just refer them to an episode of the podcast because I do not always have time to go in-depth with these questions. And again, Russell, thanks for formulating that question so well and, and you know, following up with some things that it can lead to. And, um, you know, it's a <laughs> this is ty- this is one of those types of questions that um, if I were to have a preference on, uh, like have, having an episode with like a bunch of guests where we get multiple people's feedback all at once, all at the same time in real time and we talk all through it. You know, that would be my ideal situation. Um, and we'll think about that. You know, if you hear this and you want to do something like this one time, then just let me know. Call call in or email, and um, we can work out, you, you know, coming as a guest uh, to talk about it. Um, that or This or anything else, you know, for that matter. But the topic of, you know, what do practicing heathens do? You know, again, you get... 15 people in a room that are all practicing heathens and ask them, what does a practicing heathen do? I guarantee you each one of them is going to have a different answer. You know, um, there might be some similar similarities. You know, you say, you know, what are the top 10 things or what five things or something? Give them a number. You'll probably get a lot of similar answers, but then there's always going to be one thing that one or the other aren't going to meet on at the same time. You know, it's going to come up in, in, you know, the importance on the list or, or whatever, a little bit differently from person to person. So, <laughs> you know, I could tell you what I as a practicing heathen do, uh, you know, maybe not ev- to every great detail, but I can tell you how I uh, practice my heathenry, you know. But I can't speak for greater heathenry. I can't speak for others who are practicing heathens themselves. Um, what I can say though on, 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 on that vein and kind of on that topic is like heathenry isn't just a do it how you ever do it, how you want to do it. Um, and no matter what, it's always right. Sort of, sort of, uh, religion. Um, there, there are very lenient ways, I guess you could put it in the sense that, you know, I can have a certain cult belief, you can have a certain cult belief, they can have a certain cult belief, cultic belief, like their their inner hearth, their inner cultic practices, or individual cultic practices. Um, but uh, they uh, aren't going to necessarily align, or they're not necessarily going to meet. And that's okay, because of, again, cultural and, and regional differences. But to say that it's, you know... You can just give flowers to Odin, and that's okay. And, you know, or you can just give, you know, a Red Bull to Thor, and that's okay. No, 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 no. We're, 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 not, going, we're not going that far. We're, we're, we're you know, <laughs> or we are going that far. We're saying, yeah, of course. No, it's not okay. It, it's not okay to, to crack a can of Red Bull open for, you know, a god of, of, of Midgard who, who protects our asses, you know, like, put some seriousness into this and, and that that's that's not it um and there is believe it or not there are things from historical sources sagas that you'll see that 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 there were some things about the ways of of ancient germanic people that may con- be considered nowadays as dogmatic you know and and that's how what so many heathens want to say that it is great about is there is no dogma you know, uh, in heathenry. Well, there is actually, kind of. Um, you know, there were people who were were uh, treated very badly and, and even cursed if, if, they, uh, if they spoke against the gods, you know, at the time. There were some pretty heavy-duty consequences for doing things um, that, that defied their sacred beings, you know. It wasn't just a, oh, you know, well, they didn't, they're not going to hold it against you. They'll, you know, they're not really that interested, or they'll never know, or something like that. Like, nope, they're they they those people at the time believed, you know, you you 
piss the gods off and, and you're you're in a world of hurt. Um and so you know, I guess what I'm saying is that what do practicing heathens do, <laughs> Russell, if you know, if anybody asks or we 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 direct them here to this podcast episode. You know, what do practicing heathens do versus what should practicing heathens do? It's a it's a deep question, man. It's a it's a well <laughs> it is a well of 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 a, of a question. Um but without getting too really deep into that cuz again, I think you know, we could go on just a, a whole episode on on that side of things, but to to try to give you a a, a point of, of perspective is I think if you again, you get 15 heathens in a room, they're all going to answer one thing at least differently from the other. But one of the one things that you'll hear from probably every single heathen in that room that you would ask is, you know, honor the gods, honor your ancestors, honor your people, you know, be there for your people. Um, that's a that's a recurring and common theme that that and, and belief or, or or worldview that is uh, is is pretty unilateral. You know, I mean, it goes across all points of, of heathenry that are people of that varying, you know, whether it's Germanic heathenry. Uh, Scandinavian heathenry, you know, whatever. Um, they understand that it's important to honor your ancestors, honor your, honor the gods, and and be there for your people, you know, or your tribalist mentality. Um, others would also add in, you know, to honor the land and and the whole animism side of Nordic beliefs, you know. So there's. That commonality. So, you know, what do practicing heathens do? You you could say that they all look to honor their ancestors, honor their gods and the whites and the spirits of the land and, and, and whatnot that live in and around us. Um, and, you know, honor your folk, honor your people, honor your, you know, the ones who you owe your life to and that, that owe their lives to you and you know, there's that reciprocity, there's that whole thing. What do practicing heathens do? They, they understand the, the value and the importance of, of that, you know? Um, what are some activities you may find a heathen doing during their worship? Uh, bloat, you know, um, standing in some sort of a formation around a fire, whether it be a box shape or a U shape or a circle or something so assembling around a fire and um, reciting, you know, a script or, 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 or a citation, some sort of thing, you know, uh, a blessing that they'll, uh, that they'll have formulated for the ceremony and the ritual gifts and, and uh, in some cases, you know, actual uh, animal blood. You know, um, because that's what was done in ancient times. You know, the bloat, the sacrifice was an animal. And the meat was used to feed the assembly and the blood was used to bless the proceedings. So blood some is, is, is sometimes, you know, used. So, you know, you might say, was you know, what are some things that a, a heathen does during their worship on a, on a large scale? Those are some things, you know. Now again, here's the, here's the kicker, right? It goes back to if you ask me what does what do I do in my worship, or during my worship, and then you ask another heathen what he or she does, or they do in their worship, it's going to be two separate answers, you know, because so much of our so much of what is great about heathenry in the sense that you have that that freedom to do what feels right for you. So like it's the it's the connection to, with our ancestors and, and developing and building that strong bond that we are pulled in the direction of that. You know, we 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 get the the gravity well as it were uh, the, this this the, this part of the orle that comes through that feeds from the roots. You know, we're we're, we're feeding from those roots, and so. What my where the direction that my roots are going aren't necessarily going to be the same the direction the other individuals' roots are going, but they're all going somewhere, and they're all 
being fed by that. And so your individual worship, your individual cultic practices, we'll say, what you may have heard me refer to them as before, are should be very unique to our, you know, respective um, orderly, our, our respective ways that that have come down through and to us, you know. But again, on the larger scale, you know, the stuff I mentioned, you know, having fire to, uh, you know, burn the sacrifices or or bless the, them with blood or, um, you know, some some. Uh, Heathens will will use such things as sacred smoke, tobacco, um, incense resins. I love incense resin um, things, right? These are not necessarily historically attested things that people found or did, you know, themselves. But there probably doesn't those those sorts of records weren't ever kept, you know. You know how how Bjorn does it over here. Is, is how Bjorn does it and, and how Ivar over here does it is how Ivar does it. And, you know, the, the, the two don't, don't really have to match up. So, um, but on the grander scale is, is, is where we, we see a, a very specifically laid out format, you know, how, you know, and where and, and at what time those things were done. Um, so those are some things that you might find or see during heathen practices. Which leads to this. Why do heathens not worship the same way bigger religions do? You know, because I think that what, what we're seeing is You know those those bigger religions that have uh, like almost like a corporate, you know, or, or military control uh, over things. That's not that's not what ever has has heathenry ever been about. You know, it's not about conquest. It's about survival. It's about taking care of what you have and, and making it better for you know you and yours and those that are you know closely associated to you. That's why it's not ever done the bigger way because the bigger way doesn't doesn't align with those you know inner outer in guard out in guard in guard out in guard views of the world. Um, but worshiping in the same way, I mean, every. <laughs> Every, I mean, even in Christianity, you know, the the way that the, that Baptists uh, worship is not exactly the same way as Methodists worship, and it's definitely nothing like the Catholics have mass and and all these sorts of things. You know, Every, even even within the Christian faith, there are there are variables and variances and and, and things of of how they worship. You know, so why would we, as as the type of, of people who find a place to call home within heathenry, you know, why would people like us, I say, you know, and again, I use that term loosely because we're not all, again, on the same wavelength or on the same line with things. Why would we want to be up to that level of status control um, influence that sort of thing. Like I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to that that big of a scale of things doesn't seem to align with. You know, kind of like core heathen values. You know that. I think most of us would would probably. Find a common place to meet, on you know. So. You know, this is one of, again. This is this is one of those topics where I would love to get more voices in on it at the same time because, you know, here's my experience. Here's here's my two cents. You know, and then this person over here is going to have their two cents to give and their experiences. And 
hearing it and having it done all in in real time would i think be a real fun thing to do so i would definitely like to come back to this maybe do kind of like a part one slash two uh release this being like part one and you know my reaction my response and then we can get some more voices in to to rap about it one day no no i i mean i i quite honestly just that, that i just fired that right from the hip man like i didn't Come into this episode thinking about that particularly. So that isn't random, <laughs> you know. That ain't random. But uh, yeah, man. Um, that that that's a that's again that's a deep subject. I, sometimes I'm talking to my wife and we're having a discussion which gets a little heated, and then I'll go, well, or well. And she goes, yeah, that's a deep subject. Don't fall in. (laughs) Yeah, you know, so this is, this is, I think this is a well that we've, I've definitely, you know, fallen in. This is a subject like a well, and I just fell right in, head first, buddy. But it's a good one. I love these, you know, mentally stimulating seeming seeming like a simple question right right russell because you know you're like i would love to have an episode for that person to go to well man you know this may this may not be the last stop for them uh, along that path because i I feel like i've 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 drained this teat I've, i've i've worn this sucker out to the point that it's it's getting mushy and i want to i want to save some meat for the next discussion you know, so for if, if you if you've come here because of Russell, and uh, you're wondering what's next, well, you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to subscribe, you're gonna have to follow, you're gonna have to stay tuned because uh, there's there's got to be more to come on this, and uh, I'm gonna bring in some guests on it, and you know, I have a I have a few people in mind that I would love to come together as a meeting of the minds sort of thing and and hear what we all have to say together from each other's comments. So that is going to conclude today's episode. And uh, I hope it was, you know, worth your while to have missed this past week's. But um, like I said, it was all done. It was, it was all because of of a good reason and uh, it was, it was worth it. So, Appreciate all you's understanding. Um, don't forget, check down into the comments into uh, the description area, I mean, and the uh, footnotes. I say comments. I guess it could be in the comments. Anywhere. Anyways, it's it's down in the description or in the show notes or comments or wherever it is that you're catching this at um, for all the ways that you can support this podcast. Um, follow all my socials. And there's some merchandise that you can buy. There's a, a Midgard Musings merch store. Um, you can, uh, become a patron on Patreon. You can do all these other sorts of like neat little subscription or whatever. So if you, um, feel worth, you know, like, like wanting to support the channel in that way and the podcast, there's an excellent way to do it. Uh, but share it around nonetheless, you know, all the ways that are helping get uh, the word out here and, and more listeners and viewers coming in every week. Um, the, the YouTube channel just recently passed 5,000 subscribers, so that is incredible, and I appreciate every single one of you uh, people for out, you know, out here for helping the channel get there. Um, so let's keep it up. Let's keep it up, guys. Um, so thank you again for, for uh, coming back and tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the fun things that the algorithm gods so ungraciously demand. They are fickle satisfied but anywho till we talk again may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you